Hey, this is Patrick Murphy Racy, Sony Artist of Imagery, and today we're going to try and sort out something that's pretty complicated, and that is understanding all the lenses that are made for Sony cameras. Um, there's a bunch of them, and I'm going to kind of go through and explain uh, the different mounts and then also the different series and what, I, what they all mean uh, to use a photographer, which ones you should maybe think about buying, depending on what camera you have, as a good for instance. So what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, by actually going to Sony's website, which is surprisingly useful for this video. Uh, sometimes manufacturers' websites are really convoluted and they don't really work fairly well, but in, in this case, they kind of do. So what, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take you to Sony.com, which is right here. And uh, just there's Sony.com. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to Electronics and then scroll over here to cameras, and then I'm just gonna click on lenses. And this is gonna bring up a very useful area. Um, so right here, um, it just says lenses, and uh, there's 92 different products, so there's 92 different lenses available on this website. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually click on the filter button. And this is extremely useful. Um, so this is going to break down uh, lenses for us in various ways. Uh, for instance, up here is A mount. Then there's E mount. Then there's 35 millimeter full frame. And then there's APS-C. Now, you might say, well, E mount is the same as APS-C, isn't it? And aren't all 35 millimeter full frame lenses also E mount? The answer would be yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm making this video because it's it's kind of confusing. So what we need to do first is go back to the A mount section and explain what all these are lenses like similar to the Canon EFS lenses. They only work on the APS-C sensor cameras. They won't work on the full frame cameras. Um, so all these lenses are designed for and see here, this is the last DT and then it goes to 16 and then a 16 to 35, 2, 8. And then, um, you know, down here, 18 to 135, 22, 8, 24, 70, 2, 8. Now, here's where things get really confusing. In the A mount system, all the A mount means is Minolta mount. So basically, the way Sony entered into the camera industry is pretty straightforward. They bought Minolta. Um, and Ulta was kind of having trouble, and uh, Sony decided at that time that they would make cameras. And so they just did kind of the smart thing, and they bought a camera company. So they already bought all the patents that Minolta held. They bought everything. And uh, this is a very smart move. They, it allowed them to make a soft entry into the camera manufacturer's market um, at first, and all they really did the first couple of years is relabel the cameras that already existed with Sony. Um, this is where they introduced the kind of the alpha name. Um, so that's confusing too, because now we consider everything Sony alpha, you know, B alpha, right? So it's all about alpha. So basically what happened is Sony enters in by buying Minolta, and then they, um, they changed the Minolta mount name to A mount. So everything that's designed for A mount is designed for a, a, a single lens reflex or what they call a, um, they, they call it something else, but SLT. But basically these are all Minolta mount lenses. Now you might say, well, can these lenses fit on my mirrorless cameras? And the answer is yes, but they require an adapter. And there's four different adapters, depending on if you have APS-C or full frame. But if you are interested in sort of Sony, um, you're probably not gonna be interested in the A mount system at all or the lenses, even though the lenses are fantastic, you're probably not gonna want that. Um, so basically all you need to know about A mount is it's for an SLT or a single lens reflex style camera that is really, it still exists and they still are making like the A99 II and the A77 II cameras, but they're not putting the, um, the sort of full weight of their technology advances into uh, the A mount system anymore. Although, you know, the the uh, the A ninety nine two still has like this awesome sensor that's in the A 
um, A7R2. So anyway, that be it as it may, there's a lot of people out there that are extremely committed to A-mount glass and cameras, and that's awesome. And I'm glad that Sony hasn't like pulled the plug on this. Uh, I'm, I'm happy about that. And maybe at one point in the future, we might see a new A77 with a more modern APS-C sensor, which would be great and would make a lot of people very happy, but that's not what this video is about. So basically, if you're interested in Sony E-mount or mirrorless, you're not going to be interested in the A-mount. So let's go back to the website. So here are all these different lenses. There's a bunch of them. Um, and some of the lenses are duplicated. So here's a 51.4. Well, there's an E-mount 51.4 that's Zeiss branded, so it can be very confusing. There's also a 51.8. There's actually two different 51.8s for E-mount, but this is the A-mount lens. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave the A-mount section, and we're going to de-click that. And now we're going to go into um, uh, – we're going to go E-mount only. Now, E-mount is going to come up with all of the lenses that are made for E-mount. So this is a ton of glass. It's a whole bunch of glass. So these are all the current E-mount lenses, but here's one that is a 10 to 18 F4 OSS. Now this lens has been around for a long time. It's an extremely good sharp lens, but this is made specifically for APS-C mount. Um, so here again, we have to kind of go back and talk about this. So. When Sony first started making mirrorless cameras for the very first time, they called that the E-mount. So this is a totally different mount than the A-mount. They don't interchange at all, except for the use of an adapter. And by the way, there is no adapter that will allow the use of an E-mount lens on an A-mount camera. It's not physically possible because of the flange back distance and all that kind of stuff. So you can use the A-mount lenses on E-mount cameras with adapters, but not the other way around. So basically what we have is when Sony starts to make their own stuff for the very first time, their own cameras, they uh, are making E-mount cameras. They make the A99 II and A9, uh, A99. These are actual Sony cameras that, that Sony made with the technology that Nolta had, and then they put their own stuff in there too. And these are fantastic cameras, but when they make, turn the corner and start making E-mount cameras, their intention is not to take over the world. Their actual original intent was to create a camera system designed more for um, people not in the United States or Europe. It was kind of um, designed for people with smaller hands. Um, so think, you know, Southeast Asia, uh, Japan, China, it was kind of that, that's what they were thinking, that these huge DSLRs were just too big. So they were going to make a smaller, more compact camera that might be better for uh, women with smaller hands uh, or just smaller people with smaller hands. And so they didn't really, I think, intend to do this revolution thing right off the bat. Um, so they basically make this camera called the A3000, which I actually have a couple of them. Um, one of them I've converted to infrared, which is kind of cool. You can buy them for about 150 bucks on eBay. It's it got a really good sensor, and it's the worst optical viewfinder you could ever imagine. It's hilarious. However, I do a lot of sports photography, and I do a lot of remotes. And to take an A3000 and, and put, it, put it on the post and basketball of a remote is ideal because if the ball hits it and it destroys the camera, I'm out 150 bucks. I go buy another one. It's no big deal. So... Anyway, I digress. Sorry. So back to the, the video content. <laughs> this is hard for me doing this live. So basically what happens is they make uh, a couple of lenses um, that are specific to uh, this APS-C sized small mirrorless camera. Now, my favorite one of these lenses is right here. I, I still have this. I bought this originally way back when. This is the uh, a 24 millimeter 1.8 and this is a, a branded Zeiss lens. Um, it is a tremendous lens. Um, and so I use this all the time on my A6600, for instance. So this is a Zeiss. The Zeiss made the optics for this lens. The lens is manufactured by Sony with Zeiss glass put into it. Um, and this is only for APS-C. Now, the beauty of all of the E-mount lenses um, that are 
the, the model, the product code starts with SEL. So this is SEL2418. So SEL, Sony E mount, electronic mount. Um, and then it's a 24 millimeter 1.8 aperture. So SEL2418, that's what this is. Um, so this is a great lens. I love this. I still use this a lot. And by the way, I still own the 10 to 18 f4, which we had just found on the website here. This lens is a tremendous lens, and I kind of want to give a little shout out to it because this lens might surprise you because it is an ideal lens for use on a full frame camera uh, or an APS-C camera on a gimbal. It weighs so little, and it's extremely sharp edge to edge, and the equivalent uh, focal length of this lens is 15 to 27 millimeters. So think about how tiny and small this lens is on a gimbal. So you could take this on an A7 III in Super 35, and you've got this incredible 15 millimeter to 27 millimeter uh, lens. And even if you zoom a little bit, the, camera's so, the, the lens is so small and light that you don't really knock the gimbal off balance, even if you zoom in and out a little bit. Um, so it's a pretty cool lens. I love that lens. So basically anything with SEL in front of it is a E-mount lens that is APS-C specific. So if we go back to um, Sony's website here uh, and we go back and we de-click, what we're going to do here is we're going to de-click. Let me get you back on here. So we're going to go roll up to the top and we're going to de-click filter. And now we go back to the beginning. So if I just click uh, APS-C right here, um, now you're going to see all the lenses that will fit on an APS-C camera. So here is the 10 to 18 I was just talking about. Here's a 16 to 50. That's a kit lens. That's very popular. Here's a 16 to 70. The 16 to 70, by the way, is the best kit lens in my opinion. Um, it's awesome. It's small, compact. It's F4 and it's Zeiss and it's extremely sharp. It's also radically fast for sports. Um, so if you're going to sit on the basket, this is a great focal length to have. Um, so I, I really love this lens. It's a great, it's a really good one. So anyway, you go through all these and what you're going to see is that here's the, um, these are all the lenses for APS-C. They're specific. Um, there's the 2418 that I just talked about. Notice it says SEL24F18Z. So the Z stands for Zeiss. So the one next to it is a macro lens, 30 millimeter lens, SEL 30M for macro, 35 is a focal. So uh, the 35 is the, uh, the uh, aperture. So again, 3518, here's a 35 millimeter 18 OSS, SEL. This means it's only for APS-C. So you kind of have to figure out how to look at the uh, models and if you're buying glass used online, it can be really dangerous because if you don't know what you're doing, you could think you're buying, um, for instance, uh, this lens. This is a this is a FE 135 1.8. This is a really awesome lens. This is my favorite 35 millimeter focal length lens for full frame. Um, but you could buy this thing thinking uh, that you got a great deal, and then what you do is you get you get the thing out of the box, and you get this thing which is not at all what you wanted. This is also a 3518, but it's for E-mount. So it can be very confusing. And uh, that's why I wanna make this video so I can kind of explain some of these things. So what we're gonna do is uh, gonna kind of talk about, so we've, we've just to review, you got A-mount glass, which is all Minolta mount. Then you've got the original E-mount lenses that are mirrorless, which are all APS-C only because it's not, until, um, it's not until Sony makes the A7 camera where they make a full frame where they all of a sudden can produce now full frame lenses that are designed for um, that. And what's also confusing is, uh, I'll give you another for instance, this is an FE uh, 5518, one of my very favorite lenses. This is a great, super sharp, incredible lens to carry every day if you're like on a vacation or something like that. Love this lens. Um, but this lens, when um, it first, FE is their designation for full frame. Um, so full frame E mount FE. So that's, that's how that works. Um, so basically you've got A mount glass, 
which is for the Minolta mount. That's the same thing. You got E-mount APS-C glass. Then you get full frame glass. And then we got to kind of do something else now. So what I'm going to do is go back in the website and we're going to go back to that same filter. And um, this really does help. So I'm going to de-click filter. I'm going to de-click APS-C, de-click E-mount. And I'm just going to click 35 millimeter full frame. So now we're only looking at lenses that are specifically designed for the A7 and A9 cameras, um, and also the FX9, which is a brand new camera from uh, on the video side, Pro Video. So all of these are um, the um, full frame lenses, okay? But wait, it gets even more confusing. <laughs> and so here's an example. So here is, um, my 55 millimeter lens that I was just showing you. Here's the 55. And if I turn it, it says Sony on one side, it says Zeiss on the other. So this is a Sony Zeiss cooperated lens. So they, they, they basically used um, the, the Zeiss glass in the Sony FE can, uh, lens. Um, so that's one type of lens that exists. So if we go back here, um, you're going to see down here on the bottom, it says type. So in the 35 millimeter full frame, um, if you take a look down here, there, I just clicked that as the filter. Now over here, we've got G lens, G master, Zeiss lenses, and then it breaks it down into prime, zoom, and macro. Um, so this gets even more confusing. So what I wanted to do is just kind of show you examples of these different things. So here is uh, the 35 1.8 FE lens. So this is a full frame lens made for the A7, A9 series cameras. Now this, this lens does not have, it's got Sony on one side and a focus hold button and an AF, MF switch. And that's it, it just says E-mount right here. Um, so this is not a Zeiss branded lens. This is specifically just a Sony lens. So Sony made this, but it is not designated as G or G master and it's not a Zeiss. So basically you have, um, this is kind of the, the sort of entry level glass, which is awesome by the way. But so that's the first one. The second one here is again, the 5518. So this is a 5518 that's, Zan that's branded Zeiss and branded Sony at the same time. Now, here is another thing. This is a G lens. This is, the, to my knowledge, I think this is the first G lens they ever made. And this is the uh, FE 90 millimeter macro 2.8 G. So a couple of other examples of G lenses that a lot of people think are G masters, but the 12 to 24 millimeter F4 is a G lens. The brand new uh, 200 to 600 uh, lens uh, for sports photography and nature, wildlife, that is a G lens. Um, so I've got, uh, I think, three or four G branded lenses. And um, so these are not Zeiss, um, but they're not G masters either. Um, so, and then here is one of my all time favorite lenses. I'm gonna show the next two are like in my favorite one. This is a, this is a G master lens. This is the FE 24 millimeter 1.4 G master. So basically, um, you get a couple things when you when you get into G Master. For one thing, you're going to get um, declicked apertures, so you can throw a switch and make the aperture ring um, remove all of its clicks. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's it clicks when you do that, um, and you just declick it. And so for video use, this is a tremendous lens. Uh, another one I just love. This is probably. If I had to say what's my favorite lens in all of Sony, this is it. This is the, uh, the FE 135 1.8 G Master. Um, I'm just going to give a little shout out for this lens, a little commercial. Um, in my career, I started shooting Canon FD manual focus glass. Then I went to um, uh, Nikon and I shot all this awesome glass, 428, 600 F4, 504 all that uh, amazing glass. Um, then I went to Canon uh, in 1990, about one, and I shot all the EOS stuff that they made for 19 years. Along the way, 
I also shot um, Nikon for a very brief moment at the end of that era. Um, so I got to use the, the silent wave glass and the, the D4S and the D5, amazing stuff. And then in the medium format, I started with Hasselblad and I had all that glass and un unbelievable cameras. Then I switched to the GX680, which was made by Fuji. It was a huge, almost like a motor driven four by five camera. It was a tremendous six by eight centimeter film killer. Okay. I've also shot uh, with Cinar 4x5. So I've shot all the Simar lenses, the, the red dots. I've shot the Nikkor long glass, you know, 300 millimeter. I mean, I've shot with Leica, all the M glass you could think of. I, you know, I, I own the 24, the 21 Super Angulon, the Summicrons, the Summiluxes. I've had all that stuff. This lens is the sharpest lens. I have ever used in my entire life as a 30 plus year professional photographer. Um, the 135.18 is in its own league, as is the 24.14. Um, this is, these two lenses here are, this is like really core to my kit when I go out and shoot senior portraits, weddings, lit portraits, whatever. Um, so basically, Right now in the full frame glass that's available from Sony, you have kind of multiple levels. Um, the easiest way to give you an example of this is the 50 millimeter range, okay? So in the 50 millimeter range, you have the 50 millimeter 1.8 FE lens, which is like $200. That should tell you something. It's a little, very, very inexpensive. It's a really cheap way to get into a fast kind of intermediate telephoto, um, normal, whatever. That lens is 200 bucks. Then you've got the 5518 Zeiss lens, which is tremendous. Then you have a 514 Zeiss lens. Um, so you have three different millimeter, you know, lenses in the 50 millimeter range, all with very different price points. Um, and so, you know, this is for good reason. So Sony is kind of now, you know, kind of filling out things with some of this less expensive glass that makes getting into um, interchangeable lenses a little more accessible for people that don't have lots of cash, which is really good. Um, but basically um, you have these multiple levels. And initially when, when they first started making glass, it was either um, the Zeiss brand of glass, which is the highest. And then it was the normal Sony glass that didn't have any designations before they even made G. But when they came out with G Master Glass, those of us that are professionals, when we got hold of that glass for the very first time, we all realized this is beyond Zeiss. So in the pecking order of full frame lenses in Sony mirrorless, you have the normal uh, stuff like the 3518, which is awesome. I love this lens. Um, this, this pairs extremely well with um, the uh, 85 1.8 FE lens. I love this lens. And I love the fact that they gave me the focus hold button because I use that to like use the APS-C zoom thing, punch in, I call it. Um, but basically there's like different levels. So you have the normal glass, then you have the G glass, then you have the, um, the Zeiss glass, and then you've got the G master glass. The trouble is now that Sony that is well into making their own lenses and have been for quite some time, even the no-name glass that doesn't have the designation of Zeiss, G, or GM, those lenses are terrific. Uh, the 8518 and the 3518 are just awesome lenses. Um, so you're really not stepping down when you get these lenses uh, like those, the, the ones I just mentioned. So, um, and then, the last one I wanted to kind of talk about is, uh, even if it's just briefly, there's a whole other series of lens that is in Sony uh, full frame and APS-C. And these are uh, the PZ lenses. So this is a PZ lens. This is my PZ lens. This is a cinema lens. Um, so you can basically do power zoom right on the lens itself. Of course, this powers off the camera. Um, down here, you can like decide if you want optical stabilization on or off. You know, if you're on a tripod, you'd probably want that off. You can um, uh, declick the aperture. Uh, that's what you know. The, 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 so this is where you declick the aperture for you know to make the aperture perfectly smooth. 
Also, what's really cool about these lenses is that instead of everything being on the top, which is where you'd normally find everything like that, the hash marks for aperture and focus, it's all on the side. Because when you work in, in video or film, you're kind of on the side of the camera more than on the top. Sometimes the camera will be above you or whatever. And so it's very accessible to be able to hit everything on the side. And the PZ lens is also because so many filmmakers are manually focusing still, even though we have IAF for video now, you just knock this forward and knock it back to do manual focus. So this is now manually focusing. But if I go forwards, uh, that's going to knock me right into autofocus. So these P PZ lenses are really cool. And one very little known fact about PZ glass is that there are remotes made um, on the video side for camcorders in Sony that will plug right into the multi outlet of, uh, say, an A7R2 or 3 or 4 or your A7 III or A9. And believe it or not, you can do remote zoom uh, through a cord. They, they even have an infrared remote, which is kind of cool. I have one of those I use on a Ronin M a lot. Um, but basically, you can achieve um, servo zoom remotely uh, with these PZ lenses. Now, the most popular one is the 18 to 105 f/4. This is a APS-C only lens, um, and uh, but it's really cool. If you wanted to do a cheap jib arm, for instance, you could just like buy a forty fifty dollar remote cord that has you know record on off, and it has like uh, the zoom feature on it. Um, I just bought one and I cut it and I just extended it with cat five cable. I've got a 25 foot long lead now. And so I can put, I can put this lens on a jib and I can fly that thing, you know, 12 feet in the air, fly it around zoom pan. I've got a pan tilt head thing. Um, but all this is possible through, like the A6600, for instance, or the uh, any of the A7s or the A9s. So there's a lot of capability um, because of the crossover with video, the pro video crossover, the pro audio crossover with Sony. It's, it's tremendous. So I just did want to mention that last piece of the puzzle with these PZ lenses. Um, so... Um, so that, in a nutshell, is, is what's happening. And I, I know this, I've rambled a little bit. It's hard to do these live, but it's a lot less production for me, so I hope you don't mind. We're at like 28 minutes right now, and uh, I'm just going to look over, and, and uh, uh, David Harrison is saying he's on the edge of switching. That's cool. Leo's from Germany. Good to see you, Leo. My favorite thing to drink in the whole world in the summertime is Apfelschorle. I love that stuff. Um, and uh, let's see. Mark Faust saying he's got to loves his PZ lens and uh, aperture lock. Yeah, the aperture lock is really, really important. Um, Moto Photo, hi. Um, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of offer this up. So basically, if you're getting ready to buy a used lens, especially off of eBay, where the descriptions are not always the most accurate, be very cautious. Make sure that you know what you're getting uh, before you buy a used lens that's made by Sony because you could get a bad surprise and not be able to return it. Um, and uh, so uh, one last thing I want to mention about the, um, the glass like this. This is the, um, the 2414 APS-C Zeiss branded lens. Uh, this is a 35 millimeter field of view in when you put this on uh, an A6600 for instance, or A6000. <clears throat> you can take this lens and put it on any full frame camera and it will automatically give you the correct framing uh, for this. So you'll see a 35 millimeter field of view, but you will achieve more depth of field because of the optic, because it's technically a 24 millimeter instead of being a 35. So sometimes uh, for depth of field reasons, especially in video production, I will say take off this lens. So I'll have the 3518 on uh, for a certain scene, like a kind of an interview or whatever, but I'm just not getting enough focus and I need more depth of field. So what I can do is I can take this off of a full frame camera, which is a 35 millimeter field of view, and I can replace it with this 2418, which gives me a 35 millimeter field of view with more depth of field. 
So I interchange these lenses between systems all the time. Now, another great example of this is the 5518. When I go out of the house and I don't want to carry a lot, I ride a motorcycle a lot. I love to ride a motorcycle. Um, uh, what I'll do is put a small kit together with A6600. The 2418 is going to be with me always on those trips, as is the 5518, because this becomes an 82 millimeter Zeiss 1.8 lens. It's perfect for shooting portraits or that focal length. So all these things interchange. And uh, it's very important to point out the freedom that we have in glass in Sony. And Sony loves to talk about the one mount. Um, so all of the lenses that I've shown you today are interchangeable, not just between E-mount, uh, APS-C, and FE-mount cameras in the full frame, but they're also totally 100% compatible with the FS7, the FS5. The VG uh, series video cameras are older now, but they're still pretty cool. And even the FX9. So you can take, you know, all these will work uh, together in one system. And it's a tremendous asset to have one set of glass, just one set of glass instead of having, you know, lenses for video and then another kit for stills and all that kind of stuff. Sony makes so much sense uh, in my estimation for those of us that go and do motion and stills at the same time, sometimes on the same job. So um, cool. So anyway, uh, let's see. Thanks for doing this. Hey, Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, tell your story about salvaging a wedding shoot using video. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I should do a, a separate video on that altogether. And maybe I will, because that was a pretty cool thing. Um, really quick. I got hired to shoot a wedding uh, by a family in video and the, the, the groom's family kind of hired me. They wanted me to shoot the stills, but the bride had somebody that she really wanted to have shoot it. It was a friend thing, and they did, and they actually never got photographs. They never got pictures from that photographer, and um, they couldn't even get contact with this woman after the fact, which is a, it's a bummer. Uh, and that's not to say anything about women. There's lots of incredible women wedding shooters out there and everything, other kind of shooter too, but... Anyway, in this instance, it didn't work out, and the family was just devastated. And so they they called me and said, hey, did you take any still pictures during when you were shooting the video? And I said, no, I really didn't. Um, and, I, and then they kind of explained to me that they had nothing from the wedding. And so I ended up um, going through all my 4K footage that I'd shot on three different Sony cameras, and I was able to capture uh, still frames of video, which are about 8.6 megabytes a piece in JPEGs. You can actually harvest JPEG or TIFF uh, using Adobe Premiere. And I was able to make a really nice wedding album just from grabbing my highlight reel uh, video, which is like five minutes long. I was able to make the family a beautiful wedding album. And later the, um, the bride's family uh, contacted me and I, I got one, them one as well. So I got paid like three times for shooting one wedding. I got paid once to shoot the thing in video. Then I got paid again by the family that wanted an album from the video. And then the other side of the family that had nothing, they paid me also to get uh, a printed album from the 4K footage. So yeah, that's it. And Alan Lessig, man, awesome to hear from you. Um, this is so fun to be able to see Ricky V. Um, what monitor do you use to process stills or video? I have a 4K monitor. It is made by Samsung, um, and it's it's a it was an early it was like 500 bucks. I think I got it from B and H a while back. Um, and uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think I'm getting a little tired of talking, so I'm going to end the stream here. But uh, guys, you guys are awesome. Again, as always, please um, subscribe and share my content. I'm trying to get this rolling during coronavirus, especially. I'm trying to put out as much content as I can because we're all bored silly and we can't shoot because there's nothing to do. So um, love on me a little bit and share these videos with your friends. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And I really appreciate your watching. And I'm sorry, we're at 35 minutes. Good Lord. Uh, I didn't mean to go that long. Um, but um, stay safe, uh, be well. And this is Sony Artisan, uh, Patrick Murphy Racy saying thank you so much for watching. And now I got to click the get out button. Um, so 
Have a great day, guys. See ya.